Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! It's more than 40 years since Blair Peach died after he was hit by police officers during an anti-racism protest in West London. Now, his partner, Celia Stubbs, says that she's horrified to discover that she was spied on for years while campaigning for justice. She'll give evidence next month to the inquiry into undercover policing as it examines the extent of covert surveillance in the 1980s. And as Simon Israel now reports, the undercover unit moved on from political groups to relatives and families of people suspected to have been killed by the state. It was a death that brought thousands onto the streets of London. Who killed Blair Peach has never been answered in 42 years. Now, attention will turn to how that campaign for justice was infiltrated by undercover police, who spent years spying on his partner. It was these heavily policed anti-racist demonstrations against the National Front in West London in April 1979 that the New Zealand-born teacher died from being coshed over the head. Celia Stubbs was supposed to meet up with him, but on arrival found many of the streets cut off. It was a real shock to me. It literally was a town under siege. It was frightening. The, the amount of police, they had um, police helicopters, police um, on horseback, a lot of horse, horses. Um, so, so many uh, police and, of course, the special patrol group. I mean, they'd just taken over the town. Who killed him was never solved. A Metropolitan Police internal inquiry identified the most likely suspects as half a dozen special patrol group officers. A report which was only made public by Scotland Yard 31 years later, concluded it was almost certain a police officer struck the fatal blow. But no one was ever charged. Blair Peach was not an English man. He come from New Zealand. Now them kill him and him dead and gone. But his memory lingers on. Poet Linton Crazy Johnson's lyrics in memory of Blair Peach's death reflected the darkening image of Scotland Yard at the time. At last year's undercover police inquiry hearing, this classified special branch document emerged. It's dated the 22nd of June 1979, two months after Blair Peach was killed. Stamped in the right-hand corner are the letters SDS, the Special Demonstration Squad, the undercover spies. It's an intelligence report on an anti-Nazi League meeting which focused on efforts to get a public inquiry into who killed Blair Peach. That justice campaign and his partner were to become targets for most of the 1980s. So much what they spied on was, is just so trivial. There must have been documents and statements that I haven't had. I can't believe that they're all there. What do you feel on a personal level? being a target. It's just a very unpleasant feeling. I mean, in a sense, because so much of mine's trivial, it's, it's almost as though I was a soft target, and it's purely because I was in the Socialist Workers' Party, which they infiltrated, and I was Blair's partner. Celia Stubbs is now 81, and will give evidence at the public inquiry's next session, which starts this month. Her covert police file covers 20 years of her life and reports on her activities, including attending her partner's funeral in the summer of 79. Undercover officers were somewhere among the thousands who came, a fact she describes in her inquiry statement as very distressing. She wants to understand why she was a target and who knew. You used to read about police infiltrating things in other countries almost. I mean, it, I don't know if I was incredibly naive or in fact, most members of the public would have been surprised to think. But considering the range of campaigns and organizations and family justice campaigns and women who've been abused, all these people, I think the majority of them had no idea that they'd been subject of surveillance. 
I certainly had no idea at all. The United People of South o to join in the march to show the unity. It's now almost two generations since these people marched in support of a campaign that was to become the model for future social justice protests over state-related deaths. The inquiry has yet to say just how many were infiltrated by the special demonstration squad, but at least 20 have been identified and more revelations are expected. I want justice for everybody who's a core participant. And you know, there's many people who came after me and also, for example, in the family justice campaigns, the predominantly uh, black families and the way they were treated was absolutely shameful. The undercover inquiry won't answer the question of who killed him. It's not revisiting what happened to the 33-year-old activist on the day, but what came later. It's 42 years on and, you know, I still do feel a burning sense of injustice at times, but you've got to move on. There's awful things happening in the world, in this country, which, which I try and focus on now. And I know Blair would have moved on and moved forward. The inquiry will hold a minute's silence on the 42nd anniversary, but is yet to respond to a request for the file the Metropolitan Police had on Blair Peach prior to his death. Distrust still pervades as much today as it did then. Simon Israel reporting.